Welcome to the Django Project, DJ Blogger. This tutorial is part of a YouTube Django Project playlist, which you can access in the video description. You can watch the whole course from the very beginning. If you enjoy this course and would like all the updated tutorials and associated code samples and more, you can check out this course and other courses this project features at Udemy. The link to the course is in the video description. So now we've come to the end of this section of the course. Let's make sure that all of our testing is in place. First of all, checking that we haven't broken anything from the previous section and the previous tests that we've made. And then let's explore if any other tests might be required. So let's get back into our code. Let's uh, close that, clear that. Let's just uh, clear up from the previous tutorial and let's type in PyTest. So it looks like by running PyTest, we have, we have already created some tests in the previous tutorial, of course. So you can see that those two still pass. So we haven't broken anything by adding all of those components we have done in this section to the home page. So let's take a look at coverage to see if coverage has identified any other tests that now need to be created after all the changes that we've made. So PyTest Py test, cov. So it doesn't look like there's any additional. Well, it hasn't identified any additional tests that we need to create. But when we think about it, let's take a look in our blog and our view. We have made some changes, if you remember. And you can see that our application is expecting to work in this way. We've specified a way of, or we've specified something within our application which performs some sort of decision. So potentially we want to test that to make sure that decision is working. So in this case, if we receive a HTMX request, then likelihood is that we're going to deliver this template back, else we're gonna deliver the normal index template. So that's probably an important thing for us to test. In addition to that, we have made a homepage and we are expecting it to work. So maybe we should also create a small test, which will just check to make sure that the web page does actually get displayed or the home page does get displayed when we run the server. So let's move into DJ Blogger, DJ Blogger, and then our tests. And inside of our blog, let's create a new file here and let's call this test home. So all the tests here are gonna be related to the home or the index page. All right, so we're gonna import PyTest and then we're going to need from Django, we'll see why shortly, URLs. We're going to need to import reverse. And then from PyTest uh, underscore Django dot asserts, we're going to need to import assert, uh, assert template used. There we go. Right, so next up then. Uh, we need to make sure that we have access to the database. So let's do a PyTest. Now we could make this global, but you'll find that I'll be using, using, utilizing this on each of our tests. So PyTest mark um, equals PyTest dot mark dot Django, um, Django DB. There we go. All right, so class then, uh, let's call this test homepage, homepage. And we're going to create two tests. The first test is going to check to make sure that our web page is running correctly. So the test will start the server, run our application, and then check access the home page to check to see if it's working. So let's call this a test home page, and let's create our first test as a function. So we we'll call this test home page URL. So we're just going to test the URL and then um, self, I'm going to need the client. So remember, remember client is essentially just a way of, of the client, a way of emulating the browser. So first of all, we're going to use the reverse tool to grab the URL. So URL equals reverse. And then we want to reverse the home page. So we call the URL by name. So if we go into our URLs, you can see we've named this URL related to our home or connected to our home view. So we name that and we grab that URL and then we just need to set up a response equals. So we use the client 
to navigate to our URL. And then we go ahead and assert to make sure that what is returned is what was expected. Now we want to utilize here the response codes. So if we were to navigate to a web page and it was to respond correctly, it would return a 200 status code. If it were to fail, there's a whole bunch of other HTTP codes that might be um, the response there, but typically a 404, the resource isn't available. You may have seen that before. So let's go ahead and go into the response. Remember we've we've got the, we've actioned and return the information in response. Now within response, we should have a status code and we can check that status code and that should equal 200 if it was successful. So let's give that a go. Not coverage, just PyTest. So you can see we've now run that test and it's passed, everything is okay. You can do a bit of sanity checking there if you like. And there you go, it failed. So it did return 200, okay. So that's our first test. So our second test is a little bit more complex in that we want to test to make sure that depending on what type of request our view is passed will depend on what template is returned. So if it detects a HTMX request, then it's gonna return this template. Remember that's when we scroll down on the index page and we get to the last component to load the next 10 posts else we're just going to load the normal template so let's build a test to check to see if this is working correctly we know it obviously it is working correctly we're not a new class a new function so let's say this is a test post htmx fragment so we're testing the post htmx fragment to check that when we do receive a htmx request we receive the right template and this is why we needed a cert template used tool in order to check for that template. So let's go for our headers. So we need to grab the headers, right? So we're expecting inside the headers, we're expecting a HTTP underscore HX request. And that really ties up a little bit of knowledge here because that essentially, this is what it's doing here. Remember we installed the Django HTMX tool? Well, this here is essentially checking for that that's what it's looking for so in actual fact we could do without the django hdmx tool and we could just manually set that up and look for this in the header that's passed over to the view but in this case we utilize the tool to make it a little bit easier for us to utilize but we could and like i alluded to when we did this i said that we could do this manually so that's what you would need to do if you wanted to replace that essentially in your view you would look for this in the header and then make the decision based upon that. All right, so let's uh, say true. Okay, so if it does find that in the header, so if we have made a HTTPX request, it will be true and that we will be found in the headers. So let's do a response now equals client. Uh, now here we could just use um, what we did before, getting the URL reverse here. So we could just use the reverse here, or we could set this up manually if you like. We just do it manually now, and you can have a go at maybe changing this. So that's the URL. Now remember, that's what this is going to produce anyway. So you could copy this down here. Ooh. Copy this down here and replace it and put URL here, for example. So you can give that a go, see if you can do that. We're gonna do this manually like this, explicitly. And then we want to also add the headers. Okay, so we now have grabbed from the client um, the home page and all the other information. So now what we need to do is run assert template used. All right, just to confirm, remember um, what we're doing here is we're placing this information inside of our response. So this is what this header is, is for. So we're simply just placing that in the header um, and getting the, the URL and that's our response. So the response will have this header essentially. So now we can then check the, the template used. So just to confirm what we're doing is we've set up the header manually. We then run the client. We've told it to go to this address 
and we've also added these headers. So when it makes the request for the resource in Django, obviously it has these headers and is simulating the HTMX request. And of course, because we've added that, Django is going to look for that and it's going to return this template. So we've we have created that. We've got the response now, and obviously it should have utilized that template. So we can now check that by saying response and then the name of the template, which should be or the location, which should be is it blog. In our case, it isn't. So let's just uh, grab that, put it there. So blog component post. So that's where our template is. So let's give this a go. Let's test this out. You can see that we have passed. So let's just change the name of this template. See if it works. You can see it fails. Um, so it is working. It looks like it's working correctly. So we've now tested our function here at the bottom to determine whether the HTMX template is returned or whether the main template is returned. So if you are using HTMX, that does give you a little bit more of an insight because this is a very common feature that you'll probably want to utilize, um, adding these type of elements into your application. And then if you want to test it, that is one way, a simplistic way of testing, for example, in this case, if a particular fragment or template is returned. In this section of the course, we included the tags into our application and we have made some changes within our model and we now have the tag field. So we are going to need to make some changes here. So let's move out the blog. Let's go back into our tests area. Let's go to the factories. So if you remember, we created this simple factory here for our post table. Now we need to add tags. So we're going to utilize some of the same skills we've learned here when we created our factories to generate some data to populate our database. So here we're going to utilize at factory um, dot. Remember, we use the post generation. So in order to create tags for our app, for our data, we're going to need to run this after essentially we've saved the data, if you like, um, to, to build some of these tags. So let's go def tags um, and it's just following the documentation, create extracted, I think it was, and then the keyword arguments. Okay, so you pass that all in. And then if you remember, if, if for example, we don't pass any tags in or don't supply any tags, we're just going to return. I think it's just the same code as we utilized before. So remember, we can pass tags in if we want to. Uh, tags add. So we'll add those tags. So we'll unpack them and then add them. So that's something that we can do here in this factory. We can pass in our own tags if we want to. Otherwise, um, that's about it. So I think we're just going to we're not going to add any mandatory tags here like we did previously. Um, so we keep it like that and then we can pass in our own tags. What you might be able to do now, in addition to that, is we can update all of these fields, of course, because we now know how to use Faker from this section of the course where we generated our blog factory. If you remember, we utilized Faker to generate some information. So you can go ahead and add that here if you like. I'm just going to keep it like this for now, in a simple, keep it nice and simple for now. We may add to that a bit later, but you can go ahead and add that in if you like. So now we need to test this out, of course. So let's go into our tests again. And this time we're going to go back into our models. Now this is our test post model. So we're testing our post model here. So first of all, we had a simple test, which tested the string, uh, done the string method. So let's now build a test which will test to make sure that we can add tags. So of course, tag, test, add, tag. So we'll build a, a new, we'll build a new post um, by adding some tags and a title. 
using our factory. So we bring in our factory. Remember, this is our factory, post factory. It's referring to our factory here. And now we can go ahead and let's add or create a new factory or create a new post, sorry. I'm trying to think ahead here and talk at the same time. It's just not something I can do very well. Title uh, equals test post. And then tags. OK, so to add tags, we need to just specify tags. So let's just specify a single tag here, test tag. OK, so what's happening here then is that's going to be passed into our factory. It's going to then be um, extracted and it's going to be added to our tags for that particular post. So what we want to do now is obviously test to make sure that is working OK. So what we can do is we can take this instance, which should now have our tags and say X tags count. So we can count how many tags this new post has. It should be one. So let's give that a go. Everything seems to be working OK. Let's just double check. OK. So it looks like we can add a new post and add tags to it. So I think that pretty much resolves the testing at this point. Let's just double check finally. Oh, pie test. There we go. So we've added some new tests. A range of different tests there and we've now checked to see if they work everything seems to be fine so now we're ready of course to add this to our repository so let's go ahead open up github and we can now save it now we're using in this case branch 1.0.2 okay so let's go ahead and add a new commit let's push to origin and now our code has been updated successfully